Welcome, brethren. This is uh, Emmanuel Fernandez with uh, Biblical Science, and today the Lord put it on my heart to uh, talk about a topic I don't hear talked about uh, enough. Uh, now, it, this pertains in how how we should uh, talk talking to brethren now, say people. Uh, three things you should do when it comes to other brethren that the Bible states you to do: reprove, that means bring to light; rebuke correct and exhort uh, that's like add a boy praise God yeah uh, you're right uh, and with that you need to uh, realize that uh, we're we're not under grace uh, as far as uh, save people everybody's un under grace it's called the common law of grace that's the biblical doctrine I don't hear talked about where that's the reason why you have these uh, prosperity preachers and everybody else saying God loves you because they they confuse in their his grace with love and the fact that he has his grace extended to everybody saves and unsaved people because he has been propitiated and which means he has been satisfied that means you're savable if you're unsaved but that doesn't mean you're saved but you're savable that means he's been satisfied so his grace is extended to unsaved people as well but we confuse that with the fact oh that means he loves lost people and he won't send them to hell no the common law is of grace so why why do you uh bring that up well because this video is about uh liberty saved people have liberty they're under liberty unsaved and saved are under grace but saved only the saves are under liberty uh, with issues of liberty, uh, first of all, the Bible says, "Don't." What, what if someone to judge me of issue of liberty with the other man's conscience is? Be careful when you get with issues of liberty, uh, like watching TV, which is an issue of liberty. But if you talk to some Christians, no, it's a sin. No, it's not liberty. That's a sin. That's doctrine. Don't watch TV at all. That's my focus of this video. I strongly disagree. Uh, TV, I'm just talking in TV. Music is a whole different story. I'm gonna, I'm specific. You have a lot of Christians, they dink and dunk around when they're talking, and by the end, they don't even know what they're talking about. Uh, it's from a topic. I do that too. I did that on my ministry too. I don't want to do that. My specific focus on this video right now is the issue of liberty. The spirit of the law, not the rule of the law, and uh, I'm using TV as an example, the main example. Now, forgive me if I do stray off course and talk about other things such as, you know, music or whatever, but uh, this is just about TV. Where should, should a Christian watch watch TV? That that depends on, that's between him and God, but as you, if you talk to some, say, Christians, no, that's 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 a sin don't watch no TV at all I think that's between I'm talking with TV now that's between me and God whether I should watch TV and what what should I watch now I'm about to go some scripture right now about this topic 2nd Corinthians 3 6 who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life uh, the reason why most of these self-righteous people, self-righteous people, are going to hell, these religious people, is that they they obey the Bible, all right, the letter of the Bible. They take it verbatim. They don't. They apply it to everything, and there's no exception to the rule. Uh, I'll give you an example of Romans 13. Uh, you're supposed to obey the government, you know, ministers of God. Uh, there's Christians, say Christians, no exceptions, Romans 13, no matter what the government does, you just deal it, handle handle it, you know, take it, God will punish them. No, because there's going to be a time when the government is going to go after your uh, weapons, they're already going after your body, where your body belongs to the Lord, what about health care, there's already, there's going to be mandatory health care soon, don't throw Romans 13 at me saying no obey the government no biblical description of government is someone that punishes evil 
and rewards good and judges righteously within God. You have to use spiritual discernment. That's what the, basically this is about. This is about spiritual discernment. It, is he obeying the letter of the law, obeying the government? Yeah, he is. Who am I talking about? Someone that obeys the government with no exception. But we're under the New Testament, dispensationally, we're under the church age, we're under the New Testament. I'm a New Testament Gentile Christian. Supposed to obey the spirit of the rule. What does that mean, obeying the spirit of the rule? Well, it means there, is, there are exceptions. There are contexts where that places. And when the government says, you know, register your guns and health care, enforce health care, they overstep their bounds. And it's my duty to resist it. Thomas Jefferson says, resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. And that was an unsaved person that said that. So I don't think he's Romans 13 across the board. Even though, like I said, I don't think he's saved. I think he's burning in hell right now. So, yeah, that's what this is about. Uh, you have Christians that read their Bible dispensationally, which you should. Um, that's mandatory. If you don't read it dispensationally, this book turns from a book that's clearly understood to a clearly a book of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. But those same Christians that read dispensationally, they forget about this scripture where I just read to you that the letter killeth. Are they reading it? In, are they obeying the spirit of the law or the letter of the law? There's another scripture, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let me read it one more time. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. So obeying the spirit of the Lord equals liberty, which ties into what I'm talking about with TV. Don't tell me I should not be watching no TV. How do you know what I'm watching? I could be watching a nature show. A documentary about uh, evolu evolutionism, which I can then make a, a video talking about it. The issue with TV, my issue with TV is this. Uh, use some discernment. Absorb, do not absorb TV, observe it. They're the same thing. No, it's not. Uh, the Bible teaches you to divide the word of truth. I take that to the extreme. Divide everything. The devil likes to mix these words and make them sound the same. Call and believe are the same. Believe and know, those words are the same. Uh, letter of the law and spirit of the law are the same. No, they're not. Obs if you observe something or absorb it, they're the same. No, they're not. Uh, if I'm watching um, a rated R show, I'm not absorbing it if I'm watching it critically. If I'm watching it, if I'm eating the meat of the show and spitting out the bones, what does that mean? I'm taking the truth of it, like The Matrix, which is... I'm not trying to debate that it's a satanic movie. It's a 100% satanic movie. Don't tell me there's not truth in meat in that movie. Why do you say that? Well, maybe because physicists, physicists saying after watching that movie that we are living in a simulation. We are living in a digital simulation. I believe that to be a fact, not no. See, there's me messing up the words right now. Not believe, I know we're living in a simulation. That movie, The Matrix, whether you say Christians want to believe it or not, is a documentary. Oh, he's using a justification to watch that filth, that trash. No, I'm sorry that you're, you're the God, that, that God does not, uh, the Holy Ghost is not uh, justifying you saying, yeah, you can go and watch this if you watch it critically. Just don't let it defy you. Back then, when I was newly saved, could I watch that movie and and not be defiled? Absolutely not. Now I got some spiritual discernment. I know a guy, Eric John Phelps, he's a 60 year old, he's an elder Christian. What does the Bible say about following your elderly Christians? I believe he said, I can't use that word no because I don't know the heart of him. You do not know the hearts of men. I'm sick of these uh, saved Christians saying, I know he's saved, I know he's saved. No, you don't know he's saved. You can say you believe he's saved, you strongly believe he's saved, but when you say, no, I know for a fact he's saved, well, I think you're saying you're Jesus Christ, because only Jesus Christ knows his heart. So I say, uh, Eric Phelps, this is Eric Phelps. I strongly believe he's saved, but you know what he does? He watches TV shows from time to time. How do I know? Because I hear about it in his ministry. He talks about the show 24. Why? Because maybe that's a point he needs to make in his ministry. Maybe speaking to those people that do watch TV and say, hey, you know, when you watch that show 24, do you know that the Jesuits are doing this, 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 this? 
That movie Matrix, I know it's, uh, this is what he's saying, not me. Yeah, it's a demonic movie when he says he's beginning to believe and you need to have faith to see. Well, that's biblical scripture there. Remember, the, the devil, he's all for the Bible. That's what people forget. He uses it in his movies. Okay, he's all for the Bible. He doesn't want to admit it. It's from the Bible. All these sayings that we get, it's better to give to receive. Laughter is the best medicine. What does not kill you make you stronger. It's all from the Bible. Those secular sayings are from the Bible. Okay, so the so all you who have some spiritual sermon know what I'm getting at. Okay, this world, even though it's it's worldly and it's demonic, is built by the Bible. The devil uses the Bible. More than most saved Christian does, okay? He's in it. He's one of the main characters. Okay, he's a 6,000-year-old 6, being. Of course, he knows the Bible front and back. More better than me. Okay, it's in his movies. Okay, so that's why I say the Holy Ghost guides you to all truth. Why doesn't the Bible just say godly truth? Or just truth? Well, all means secular, too. Secular and biblical truth. What's one of the ways you can get secular truth? Watching movies. Watching TV. Oh, but that's abstain from all evil. Net no wicked thing in my eyes. Well, are you think about it? Are you uh, are you uh, following that letter of that law or the spirit of that law? Are you using spiritual discernment where you quote that scripture to me? Because I know I do when I watch TV. I go split TV. Okay, that that's not for me either. That's the old me. I'm not watching that. Oh, here's a nature show. Let me watch that. Let me watch some football. Two hours. Is that? A evil thing it could be if I let it away getting me from reading the Bible if I was planning on reading the Bible and I said no I don't want to read the Bible you watch the football yes in that way it is I'm discerning I'm following the spirit of the law not the letter because the letter killeth you have a lot of saved Christians this is for primarily for saved Christians that are following the letter of the law not the spirit of the law because they are planning and everything no there's no exceptions there are some exceptions in the Bible okay but there are some that are concrete. Okay, here's where you need spiritual discernment. There are some scripture in the Bible where I don't care letter or spirit. There's no exceptions. But there are there are some there are some scripture in the Bible where there are some exceptions. Well, that sounds confusion. It is confusion. That's why you need to be saved to understand this spirit book. This is a spirit book. This is my Bible at King James. It's not a, even though it's written by men, it's written, it's, it's inspired by God. That means you have to follow it spiritually, not by the letter. Let the Holy Ghost guide you on where, okay, is this, is there an exception to this? Or there's no exception? Well, here's the scripture right here. There's no exception. Let your, 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, or it saith the law. That's about female, you know, female speaking up in churches. Is there are there exceptions to that? Uh, no. Once the church service has begun, to the point that is ended, the only time you should hear a female's voice is when she's singing in the church choir. That's it. Now, before the church service, she can speak. Okay, we're having Bible study. Blah blah. But once the, the pastor has started the church service to the point that he, it's over and the pastor should be a man, no exceptions. Uh, what about the spirit? What about the spirit? No. Spiritual discernment, remember? The Holy Ghost, the Bible is the only book on the planet where the author is present when someone when it's, when you're reading it. The Holy Ghost is right there with you saying, uh -uh. the spirit does not apply there. Okay, the spirit applies there. Okay, the letter applies there. Well, this is no exception. Another one is let no woman usurp authority. Not sure she can give you good advice, but it it be, ends it ends with the man of the house, the husband. My wife cannot usurp authority. No. What about the spirit of the rule? No. In that case, there's no exceptions. Now she can change my mind, but it ends with me. I ultimately make the decision. That's what this video is about. Yeah, you post. How are you supposed to read the Bible? Well, two ways. You supposed to read dispensationally. Who is this directed to? What age is this in? Does it apply today? And spiritually, because it's a spirit book. It's God breathed. Okay. Are there exceptions to this? This is what you should be asking yourself. Are there exceptions to this? Can it? Is there? Is there exceptions or not? 
Am I obeying the letter of the law or the spirit of the law? Because Edward Revere, which is William Shakespeare, you know what he said? Even the devil can quote scripture if it suits his needs. These saved Christians that are quoting scripture are suiting their own needs. And these are the Christians that are for Christmas, using the, the scripture, let not no one judge you for your holy day. See, you're using the letter of that law. You're not using the spirit of that law. Because Christmas is an unholy day. It said holy day. Let no nobody judge you of your holy days. Well, that's an unholy day. That's an anti-Christ holiday. I'm not going into Christmas because I already made a video about that. Okay, but I'll sum it up. The reason why I don't celebrate Christmas, well, same reason why I'm not a Catholic. The purpose of Catholicism is to unite the heathen, the lost world, with the saved. Well, Christians say Christians celebrate Christmas. I know, that's what the devil wants. The devil wants his holiday legitimized. How can it be legitimized if only the world celebrated? The devil likes to mingle, which is in the Bible, his kids with God's children. Children of the light mingles with the children of the day. That's what the devil wants. That's what Constantine wanted. He was getting uh, attacked by the Visigoths and the Vandals back in the Roman times. He wanted something to unite the, the heathen with the Christians. Why? So he can rule them. Better to rule someone. See, the devil does not divide and conquer. Has, let, me go, let me go about divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is of God. It's not the devil. God's going to divide and conquer when he raptures us up and he conquers the people on the earth. The devil likes to unite and rule. Oh, the devil's about divide and conquer. No, I don't think so. There should be, could be some exceptions. Again, there you go, spiritual discernment. But I think 90, 95% of the time, the devil's model is unite and conquer. And I can use historical facts up and down the spectrum of unite and conquer. United Nations, United Way, all the Jesuits. Don't tell me the devil is primarily divide and conquer. No, he's unite and conquer. Let's get these Christians celebrating my Christmas here, which is really a pagan holiday, but let these save people, yeah. So they can mingle, so they can be defiled by the unlost world. Oh, but let not, don't let the holy day, you know, don't let no man judge you of the holy day. Go ahead and use the letter of that law. The Bible is supposed to be a sword, but you're using it as a shield because you're hiding behind it. I don't hide behind scripture. God is my shield. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. Every word of the every word of the Lord is pure. He He is a shield, not His world, His word. He is a shield for, for those who put their trust in Him. Okay. I I used to say that by the way. Oh, the God's word is my shield and sword. No. It's the sword of the Spirit. These Christians are using it as a shield. Are those Christians using the letter of the law? Let me, let me make a point. Uh, Romans 13. Uh, if I'm a newly saved Christian, and I go to a, 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 a saved Christian that has been saved for a lot of while, and I say, no, you shouldn't do that. That's not biblical. But government says, okay, have some tolerance towards sodomites. It's a law now. Remember, I'm a saved Christian. I've been saved for a while. I'm telling a newly saved Christian. Well, I just use the Bible in a negative light. Because I'm telling you, you can't not use the Bible in a negative, negative light because the devil does it every day. I just use the a spirit of the law as a letter telling a, a newly saved Christian, well, just use the Bible. He, he quotes scripture, though. I should obey government at all times. He used the Bible from a sword, spirit, to a shield, the letter. Anyone uses the, the Bible as a letter of the law is using it as a shield. Why? Because they're cowering behind it. Don't watch no TV. Abstain from all evil. Uh, set no wicked thing about my eyes. Are they using the letter of the law or the spirit of the law? I think they're using it as a shield, the letter. Why? Because I could be watching a nature show. I could be watching a documentary. I could be watching a, a debate, which was on TV, by the way, of, of Ham debating uh, uh, Bill Nye. Remember Bill Nye, the science guy? He's an atheist, by the way. They were debating on creationism. That was on TV. What do you know? Now, if I obey that uh, heretical uh, Christian saying, abstain from appearance all evil, throw your TV away, I could never see that debate. Well, you could have saw our internet, but I like watching things on that I watch on in the internet. I like connecting it to my TV. I connect it to VA, HDMI. So, no, I wouldn't have watched it if I had no TV. 
Man, it's not the TV that's the wicked thing. I don't know what's all these people shooting their TVs. It's the cable box connecting to it. The devil is in the details. I love that phrase. I wonder why. Well, maybe because the devil's specific. Just like God is specific. Be specific of what you're talking about. What are you exactly you're talking about here? Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. The letter killeth. Don't use the Bible as your shield. Don't cower behind it. Romans 13. Let no man uh, smite the other cheek, which is, that's not even for me. That's uh, turn the other cheek is for the Israels in the church of Israel. That's not even for me. So I'm not going to turn the other cheek. You slap me, I'll slap you back. What else do they like to hide? Kind of, uh, for God so loved the world. No, God does not love you in the present tense. He shows grace. That's not love. That's mercy. Common law of grace. They hide behind that. What else they hide behind? Uh, they hide behind let no man judge your holy day. Romans 13. What else? You're using it as a shield. You're supposed to use it as a sword. Attack people with it. Don't hide behind it. Oh, Romans 13. Oh, he's he's making fun of scripture. He's No, no. To people that are using spiritual discernment in this video know what I'm talking about. You're supposed to attack with the Bible. It's a sword, not a shield. The shield is a shield of faith. That's from God. Your God is, my God is my shield. He, the word of God is not my shield. He's a spirit, he's a sword. That's why Jesus Christ is the word manifested in the flesh. Do you, do you know Jesus Christ is also called the word with a capital W? How many people confuse that? Oh, word, lowercase and uppercase W are the same thing. No, be specific. Jesus Christ is word manifested into flesh. So what does that mean? Oh, the, the, Cower behind the Bible when you're preaching? Shield, oh please, uh, I love you, Cower. Quote scripture. Was he attacking the devil in the desert with scripture? Or was he hiding behind it? He was attacking him. Get thee back, Satan, because thou savor things of men, not of God. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Is he using the Bible as a shield or as a sword there? I think he was stabbing the devil with it. What are you supposed to do with memorization? I get oppressed by demons all the time. Maybe you can't get possessed because I'm saved, but you get oppressed. When I get oppressed by demons, you neither give place to the devil. Sword, stab the demon there, and they run. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? Quote, quote in scripture to him. Not using it as a shield. The letter of the law, use it as the spirit of the law. It's like, uh, let me give you an example. A secular example. Uh, this is a real good one because this perfectly... Describes my uh, uh, topic. Uh, I, I get pulled over. I'm driving. I get pulled over by a cop because I ran a red light. The cop does not give me a ticket. Why doesn't he give me the ticket? Because my wife's giving labor. She's 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 uh, about to give birth. Her water broke, and I'm doing 89 miles an hour, breaking all sorts of laws. Now, that j cop was judging me by the letter of the law. He should have given me a ticket. We have cops that will do that. He's not wrong. He's not following the spiritual book. He's following the letter of the law. Okay? But if that cop was saved, he would not give me a ticket. This cop was saved. He didn't give me the ticket. He saw in the... Okay, sorry, officer. I'm talking to the cop. I ran a red light. I know it was against the law. I'm breaking all these sorts of speed limits, breaking the law, the letter of the law. But my wife's about to give birth. A saved cop, an unsaved cop, would be like, yeah, I understand, sir, but I have to give you a ticket. You broke the law, which I did, the letter of the law. If you're unsaved, you're under the curse of the law. You're under the letter of the law, by the way. That's why you need Jesus Christ, because he obeyed the letter of the law. So you don't have to obey the letter of the law. But that doesn't mean you should oh, go do whatever you want. No, you're supposed to obey the spirit of the law. This saved cop obeyed the spirit of the law. Okay, I apologize, sir. I didn't see your wife there giving birth. Let me go ahead and escort you to the hospital. Gave me no ticket. Why? He obeyed the spirit of the law fully. If you can't understand that, I'm sorry. That's There's no way better I can explain that. A cop that was unsaved. I'm not even saying he could be saved and still give me... Ticket. Cop that does not follow the letter of the law, that does not follow the spirit of the law, would have given me the ticket. He broke the law. No exceptions. Oh, he's giving birth. Of course I'm not giving him a ticket. I read my Bible. I'm saved. I'm the cop. 
and you give him an escort so he can get to the hospital safe so he can get birth to his wife. She, are you reading it dispensationally? Yeah, that's mandatory. If you can't read it dispensationally, throw that book away. Let someone else read it to you. And you open Pandora's box, you let someone else read it to you because you're supposed to read the Bible yourself. But make sure you're also obeying the spirit of the law. And I know for a fact most Christians aren't, and I'm one of them. I'm a hypocrite. I know guarantee and throughout this ministry, when I preach, I hide behind the scripture. I use it as a shield when I should be using it as a sword. I obey the letter of the law. Okay? But with Christian, with Christmas, I don't think I am. I don't think that's an issue of liberty. Remember, you're supposed to divide over issues of doctrine, not liberty. I think Christmas is a doctrine issue to me, not a liberty issue. Oh, you're using the, the spirit of the law correctly. You're not using the spirit for discernment. Could be, but like I say, in the judgment seat of Christ, God will square this all away. We'll know who's right and who's wrong. I prayed about it several times. Good Lord, convict me. Should I show grace in this Christmas thing? Not budging. A Christian's supposed to be stubborn. Right or wrong, let's say I'm wrong. A Christian should still be stubborn. He should not bend automatically. If you rebuke me, no, I'm not going to bend. I'm going to pray about it, pray about it, pray about it, pray about it. Watch some documentaries, read the Bible, read the Bible. If I still don't break, I'm not bending. And I did that with Christmas. I'm not bending. This is an Antichrist holiday. This is December, by the way. I don't know what time you'll see this, but. This is December. The way this is the date I'm publishing this, making this video. It's an Antichrist holiday. It's to unite saved people and the lost. That's why Catholicism is pagan Christianity, unsaved and saved. Saved people celebrate Christians uh, Christmas. I know. The devil wants you to celebrate if you're saved. Okay. He wants you to unite. The devil shall mi mingle his children with God's. It's in the Bible. Okay. It's a it's an Antichrist holiday, okay? It's preparing you for the Antichrist. That's why I don't think it's a liberty issue. Oh, you're against all holidays again? Don't make the exception the rule. I am for Passover, Tabernacle. I'm not going to what holidays I'm for and against. If you have discernment, you should already know which holidays I'm for and against. I'm being specific. Don't make the exception the rule. Oh, he's against Christmas, so he's against all holidays. No. I'm targeting one rule. You're not going to let me stray off my directive, my objective here. Remember, God is primary primary in how he acts. Jesus Christ died for, primarily for the Jews. Are you talking about unconditional election? You bet I am. Primarily, he died for the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. But everyone can benefit. Yet, to, yet that's how you need to look at life. You need to be primary. Okay, what is my primary focus here? The devil's in the details. I love that phrase. I wonder why. Because it is. Are you are you specific to what you the how you're debating me? Are you specific in the scripture you're using? Are you? So yeah, this thing with church is a perfect example. Someone that does not use spiritual discernment thinks a church is a church building. No, it's my body. I have tattoos on me right now. That's why I'm covering it up. That's why I'm clean shaving. I'm supposed to be holy. That's why I don't look like a, a heathen. Oh, why should I list this guy? He has a mohawk. He has tattoos everywhere. Oh, he must have some discernment. Look how he looks. He's well dressed and and all that. Because he knows he's a, a church. Ye are God's building. But someone that doesn't have discernment thinks the church is a church building. No. And someone thinks that's biblical. It's not biblical. They're following the letter of the law, the Old Testament law. Of going to a church building. No, we're under the New Testament, we're under the dispensation of the Laodicean church age. That's the current age we're in. Laodicean means lukewarm Christians, double minded Christians. They're neither hot or cold, they're lukewarm, and I'll spit thee out of my mouth. They got one foot in the world, one foot in uh, with Christ. Oh, that's you because you're watching TV. No, it isn't. I'm using the sermon. We don't like to use the sermon. We really don't. It's all or nothing. Oh, he's talking about Calvinism. I'm, a, I'm against it. I'm not even going to listen to him. He who answereth uh, answereth before he heareth is a folly and a shame to him. Oh, you're using the letter of the law. No, I'm using the spirit of the law. Then that's apt. 
That's uh, just to use that scripture in that point. I'm using justly. Use scripture justly. You can only do it by faith. The just shall live by faith. The spirit of the law. So when, when I'm talking about Calvinism, I'm not a Calvinist, by the way, but I agree some of them is scriptural. You have these saved people. There you want to hear it. Emma's sermon. Now, granted, are, sh are there some things that I talk about you should not hear? You don't want to hear? Yeah. Like if I come on and say... Uh, in this current age, Laodicean age, you can lose your salvation. Absolutely. No. Oh, what about spirit? No, there's no spirit or letter. No. That, I'm absolutely sure I have the sermon. You cannot lose your salvation in this age. You can lose, if I come on and say, you can lose your salvation in the uh, 70th week of Daniel. You have saved people. Oh, no, no, eternally secure. No. They obey in the letter of the law. Someone obeying the spirit of the law knows better. Absolutely, you can lose your salvation. How? Taking the mark? There's Ken Hoven, which I admire. He's on the way to the destruction of the flesh, sin unto death, saying you can take the mark and still be saved. That's what he's saying, not me. Okay? This is about spiritual discernment. Obey. Use every scripture when you use it to rebuke someone. Make sure you're using it as a sword, not the shield. Shield is the letter. You're cowering behind it. Romans 13, okay? That's why I'm obeying government. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping Christmas, this pagan holiday. Uh, here's my scripture. Let no, Don't judge me on a holy day. Oh, don't watch no TV. Abstain appearance from all evil. Shield. Shield. Letter of the law. No, this, this, don't, don't get me wrong. This takes work discerning. Okay? My head's hurting making this video. That's why I know this is not me speaking. This is the Holy Ghost uh, uh, guiding me on what to say. You need spiritual discernment. Eric Phelps, this guy I was talking about, he's an elder Christian. Do I know he's saved? No, I'm not Jesus Christ. Do I strongly believe he's saved? Yes. He was primarily one of the reasons why I read my Bible and got me to Christ. Praise God. Eric John Phelps, he goes to a movie theater. There's Christians that you tell me to go to a movie theater. No, they're not saying I'm not saved. I'm not saying that, but they don't want to do me. Staying from appearance all evil. He goes to the movie theater from time to time. And so do I. Why? Uh, maybe some movies uh, I can feel that I can be edified from. Maybe that. Remember, I told you, as far as with TV, you observe, don't absorb. You know what you cannot help, though? Well, you will absorb music. Let's talk about music. Now I'm done talking about TV. Remember, I told you I... I speak in specifics. I don't group everything together like the devil does. Music and TV are totally different. They're the same. No, they're not. If you have some spiritual discernment, you know that they're, they're totally different. I don't listen. I used to listen to rap. I do not listen to it no more. If, if I were to listen to it, I probably listen to Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur. Why? Because I believe he was saved. He he speaks, even though he has a he curses and all that. There's some songs that is biblical. Why? Well, when he's talking about heaven, got a ghetto. Again, most Christians right now are probably shutting this video right now, but those who have spiritual discernment are willing to listen. When Tupac Shakur talks about heaven, got a ghetto, he has a he talks he talks before he actually sings. He says, "I know this is why God puts people in a ghetto because he's testing them." That's what he's saying, not me. If if you're evil. You're with the devil. But if you're good in your heart, even though that you're in a place of hell, you're with closer to God. That's scriptural. Okay? Well, that's an unsaved heathen. He's a rapper. Well, I believe at the end he was saved. There's people that are saying he followed Jesus Christ at the end. I believe he was saved. I don't know because I'm not God. But I believe he was saved. Sometimes the time I probably listen to Tuba. But I haven't listened to it in a while. I listen to primarily classical music because it's a known fact. Undisputable, irrefutable fact.